Did you know that you can search for photos on your iPhone by simply describing what it is that you're looking for? Here, let me show you. I pull down on the home screen and I type coral. Now I see a bunch of photos of coral that I took while scuba diving, including this one. I think this is super cool. Now, my name is Peter. And in addition to that tip that I just showed you, I will show you 13 more things that your iPhone can do that you probably didn't know about yet. Tip number two is that you can select multiple items at once by swiping up with two fingers in many apps. Here I am in my Apple Notes app. I'm going to take two fingers and just go like this and go up and I've selected all five notes. Now what I can do is I can tap move at the bottom left and for example, move these to my main notes folder, but it gets better. If I go over to that main notes folder and I scroll to the bottom, let's say I wanna select all notes from here on up. I can take two fingers and start doing the same thing and then take a third finger all the way in the top right to go all the way to the top and select a lot of notes at once. It's a bit of a tricky maneuver, but if you manage to do it, you can really save yourself a lot of time. Tip number three is that you can customize your phone's share sheet. Now the share sheet is that thing that shows up when you press a share button. So for example, I'm here in Safari and I'm going to press the middle button at the bottom, the share button. When I press that, the share sheet comes up. You might see some people here as well, but I hid those for privacy. See that list of apps, that row of apps here? And then if I scroll down, you'll see all of these things like copy at the reading list and whatever. You can customize which apps show up here just by going all the way to the right and then tapping the more button. Now let's say I'm gonna tap edit at the top right. Now let's say I want share to Twitter to be one of the first things that shows up. I'm gonna press the plus button to the left of Twitter. And then I'm actually gonna take Twitter by grabbing it by the three bars at the right and drag it all the way to the top. Then I'm gonna press done press done again. And now you'll see that Twitter is one of the first apps that shows up for sharing to. Now we can also do this with the actions at the bottom here. So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and at the bottom left, I'm going to tap edit actions. Then let's say I want it to be really easy to print an article. I'm going to tap to the left of print and you'll see that print now sits at favorites at the top and I can reorder those as well if I want to. Then I press done and now you'll see that copy and print are sort of favorite share sheet options. Really handy if there's a particular way that you often share things. Tip number four is that you can declutter the home screens on your iPhone without having to fully remove apps from your phone. So let's say I've got an app right here, the Telegram app, and I don't use it that often, but I still want to keep it on my phone. I'm going to long press it and then you'll see remove app. I'm gonna tap remove app. It now gives you the option to delete the app, but also the option to remove it from the home screen. So let me do that. So the app is gone from my home screen, but it still exists on my phone. If I swipe over to the right, I get the app library. And at the top, I can just search Telegram and it will show up. Tip number five is that you can customize your phone's control center. Control center is what happens when I take my finger and I swipe in from the top right. You see this screen over here, which for example, I can turn on the flashlight on my phone, but there's another bunch of things that I can do. You can customize what is accessible here really quickly. To do that, go out of control screen and go to the settings app on your phone. Scroll down a little bit until you find control center. Then under control center, you'll see that it says included controls. You can drag them around first of all, but you can also add new ones. So I'm gonna go all the way down and actually tap voice memos. Now you'll see that voice memo sits here as well. So if I open control center, now I can really quickly start saying something and record it as a voice memo on my phone. And Control Center is also available when your phone is locked. So this can be a great way if you like to make audio notes to yourselves to do that really quickly on your iPhone. Now, tip number six might really blow your mind. You can move multiple apps at once around your home screens. I just learned about this recently and it's gonna save me a lot of time doing this next time. What you do is you start moving around one app just as you do. You take your finger and you start moving around one app. Let's say the Translate app right here. Then you're gonna take another finger and just tap other apps. And then you can start moving them over to the next screen, for example, and press done. Tell me you knew about this. I don't think you did. Tip number seven is that you can change languages on your phone per app. So as you can see, my phone is set to English, but I'm Dutch, I live in Amsterdam. And so the street names here are in Dutch. And so when I navigate with Google Maps, the English voice in Google Maps will often really mess up the street names, making it really difficult to do turn-by-turn -turn navigation when I'm driving. So I can go into the settings app and go to the Google Maps settings and change the preferred language all the way at the bottom to Dutch. Now Google Maps will pronounce street names correctly here. Sadly, this doesn't work for Apple Maps. You can find Apple Maps here 
but there is no language language option in the settings over here. It doesn't seem to work for Apple's own apps. If you wanna change the language using Apple's own apps, you'll have to change the language of your entire iPhone. Now, tip number eight is that you can check headphone audio levels live while playing back audio to make sure you're not damaging your ears. Let me start playing some audio. In this case, I'll do a narration of an article in The Economist, and I'll start playing that. Then I'm gonna open Control Center, and in Control Center, you see this hearing thing. If that's not there, you can go back to the previous tip or a couple of tips ago and add hearing to Control Center. And notice how it says the current decibel level and whether the headphone level is okay or too loud. If I lower the volume, you see the decibels go down. Really nice for treating your ears nicely. Tip number nine is that you can teach Siri how to pronounce your name or someone else's name. To do this, open the Contacts app and then find the person whose name you like to correct. So for example, let's say I'm a substitute teacher and I have a student called Jake Wellen, but Siri insists on calling her Jacqueline. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the edit button over here. And at the bottom, I'm going to tap add field. I'm going to choose phonetic first name, and then I'm gonna type J Quellen, or however the name is supposed to be pronounced. Tip number 10 is that you can skim or scrub more precisely in video and audio files. Now, you probably already know, and I'm looking at a video right here, about the plus 15 and minus 15 second button. So if I play this video, I can tap plus 15 and we skip 15 seconds ahead. But if I actually hold that button, hold this scrub button over here, you'll see that I start skimming or scrubbing by one or two seconds at a time, which can be really handy for skimming through a video. This also works with audio files. So if I go ahead and open my music app, I can do the same thing here with a song. I can hold the two right facing arrows and you'll see that it starts scrubbing through the song. Tip number 11 is about inserting special characters more easily with the iPhone's keyboard. Let's say I've got a note here and I wanna say that it was 15 degrees out. I'm gonna press one, two, three at the bottom right to bring up the numbers pad. Then I'm gonna hold my finger onto the zero and by long pressing on the zero, you see that the degrees symbol comes up. Easy. Now let's say I want to say we paid 34 euros. My currency is set to dollars by default. So if I'm over here in this same screen on the keyboard, you'll see that I can insert a dollar. But what if I wanna insert a euro? I just long press the dollar and make it a euro. And there's a couple of other currencies over there as well. Now what if I wanna insert a number more quickly? The normal way you do that, right, is you go to the one, two, three at the bottom left, and then you insert a number like six. But you can actually do that slightly quicker. If you're here, you can just actually hold the one, two, three, and then drag over to six and it gets inserted and immediately goes back to the letter keys rather than the number keys. Now, tip number 12 is that you can delete apps from your phone right from the App Store app. If you're like me, you like to keep your apps up to date. So you click your profile photo at the top right sometimes and you scroll down and then you'll press the update all button. And that's great, but what if you see an app here and you go, huh, I haven't used it in a while, I want to delete it. It's really simple, just swipe to the left and delete it. No need to go into your app library or to find the app anywhere else. Tip number 13 is that you can use Face ID while wearing a mask. Go to your settings app, then scroll down and find Face ID and passcode. Enter your passcode. And then all you gotta do is enable Face ID with a mask right here. It's not as secure as requiring your full face for Face ID because it has less data to work with, but it can be really convenient if you're still often wearing those masks. Now, the final tip is that you can scan and then sign documents directly from the Notes app. First of all, if you don't know how to scan, you have to watch my video on Apple Notes tips. So I'll put a link to that in the description and mention it again in a second. But let's say you've scanned a document inside Apple Notes and now you wanna add your signature to it. Here Here's how you do it. You tap the document inside the note. And then at the top right, you're gonna tap the share icon. Once you do that, you see this thing come up. You're gonna choose the option that says markup. Then at the bottom right, there's a plus symbol. I'm gonna press the plus symbol and then tap signature. Now you can add a signature that you've created in the past if you've done that, or you can create a new one. So just tap add or remove signature. And let's say I wanna remove this one and I'll just do my initials for now and just do P, A, okay, done. Now you can just insert that anywhere. You can make it really small and put it at the top right. So this can be handy if you need to put your initials on a lot of documents, for example, and that's that. Now, if you wanna share this document with the signature on it, all you do is just press the share button at the top right, share it in whatever way is convenient for you. Now that last tip was about Apple Notes. And did you know that Apple Notes has become a lot more powerful recently? I made an entire video just like this one, specifically for Apple Notes with lots of Apple Notes tips. So go ahead and watch that next. On your way out, just make sure to hit that like button and have a great day.
Čau.